Cancer is a situation where a community of cells that in our bodies gets out of control. Uh, to understand that, you really have to go back and think about uh, what we're made of. We're made up of trillions of cells, and they grow and in an orderly way. They, they turn over. If you go way, way back to the beginning, to the embryo, the, the, this multiplication of cells to make up all of our organs, the cells all have their instructions from uh, DNA, their deoxyribonucleic acid, which has the messages of what they're supposed to do. And they follow their instructions and they, and they orderly unfold to make organs, to make your liver, your kidney, your brain, and, and eventually a, you know, an adult human being. And even then, our cells are constantly turning over, but it's all under precise uh, control. But under certain influences, some groups of cells in our body may start to grow out of control. They just start to grow in a kind of helter-skelter crazy way, and they start making a, a tumor. A tumor simply means an abnormal growth, and a tumor can either be benign or malignant depending on the type of growth and the type of cell that it is. And so you might be diagnosed with a tumor, and you can be just fine if you have it taken out. Um, or you might be diagnosed with a tumor and then have to undergo certain therapies because it is actual cancer. Cancer develops because it acquires those DNA mutations and the mutations can occur because of viruses as in um, cervical cancer. We know most of them are caused by the HPV virus. Um, skin cancers are usually from sun damage. Um, other cancers from chemicals in, uh, in our environment are work related. Um, so it depends on the alteration of the DNA. So every every tumor has a different type of mutation or alteration. So there are cells that cover or line um, hollow spaces, and we call those epithelial cells. When those cells become malignant, they become what we call carcinoma. And that's the most common type of malignancy that people are you know, most familiar with, breast cancers, prostate cancers, those are all carcinomas. Then there are cells of the connective tissues, of the stuff in between those cells. And those are called mesenchymal tumors, which are sarcomas. Then you have what some people call the liquid tumors or the blood tumors, the leukemias and lymphomas. Those are a little bit different because they're a different kind of cell. The cells of the bone marrows are cells that make up lymph nodes. And then finally, there's kind of a tumor that's kind of a category all to itself, which is the malignant skin cancer known as melanoma. It's a very different kind of cell, a cell that can be found anywhere and can, and can uh, spread and, and have unusual appearances. So we just kind of give that tumor its own, its own category unto itself. As the tumor spreads, it'll invade little blood vessels and then spread through the bloodstream to other parts of the body, or it can get into lymphatic channels, which are uh, another kind of uh, vascular system within the body that deals with the excess fluid. Even if a few cells have spread on a microscopic way, you know, to different parts of the body, if there are only a few of them, uh, chemotherapy might be able to wipe out all of them, and then the patient will do very, very well. Early detection is one of the most pivotal portions in strategizing treatments that we know of. And you're less likely to die from a cancer the earlier you detect it. So some tumors have a pre-malignant stage. So they're still in the same place. They haven't infiltrated tissues, but they take on certain cellular changes that we can detect and say, okay, we need to look more carefully and try to help take out whatever pre-malignant tissue is present before it becomes malignant. So in those particular tumors, and that's especially true for tumors of the cervix, prostate, and colon, we can actually screen for them. A cytotechnologist is a professional who's trained in the morphology of cells to detect precancerous lesions and, and cancer cells. And the basis of their training is uh, an ability to uh, pick out isolated uh, cells out of numerous normal cells in a process called screening. Having those cytotechnologists there that are doing this every day is a great tool 
you know, I go down there, they're incredibly helpful, they get the slides prepared, and then I'm able to just look at it under the scope and hopefully um, facilitate the clinician in a diagnosis right there. The military side of technology is extremely relevant. I think that it is nearly impossible for the pathologist to do their job without a, a strong cytotechnologist. And I think it's really important to have a continued strong cytotechnology program for the DOD to continue on that mission for sustaining the force and for early cancer detection.